complaining right now they think that it's it's really blown up and, and we've lost the, the, the battle against the, the right of bill and the the reality is that we have lost a battle a couple of battles but we have not lost the war the battle against the rhino beetle has only just begun as University of Guam's Cooperative Extension Service agent Rawling Kitagua reports that although we've caught beetles in all the villages, breeding sites have not been located in each village. Kitagua says it's been trial and error for the eradication program as Guam's ecosystem is much different from other islands who've suffered from the invasive species for decades. We have taken those methodologies that they've developed, uh, the traps, the, um, the um, trap pits, the, um, the lures, and the virus and the fungus, and we've tried to incorporate all of these in our eradication program. But Guam's ecosystem, once again, is very different and therefore it poses very unique challenges. So far, Guam has permits to put in a biological fungus to put in traps. The rhino beetles are attracted to it, they go in there, and when they go through the pile, they end up getting the fungus on their body. That fungus then um, will then uh, penetrate and grow in their body and, and kill them. But what can you do as a homeowner? Kitagua says maintain your yard inclusive of your green waste. One of the reasons why the rhino beetle has spread throughout the island is because Guam does not have a green waste management plan. Because Traditionally, people gather green waste when they clean their backyard or when somebody cleans a lot, they just take it and push it in the back in the corner or, or over the hill or something like that, and they allow that thing to break down and become compost. But what's good for compost poses as a breeding ground for rhino beetles. As Kitagua notes, most homeowners aren't willing to travel and pay to dispose their green waste in the one approved green waste hard fill located in Jigo. One of the options that we can do for managing the green waste is burning. I'm not a fan of burning. I, I honestly believe that the organic matter is more valuable as a soil amendment and, and build our, and, uh, our soil and help uh, protect our waterlands. But if you have to, and, and we do it too when, when, in, when need be, um, you can burn. Kitagua says it's important to work together as a neighborhood to control the population. If you choose to burn your green waste, you must obtain a burning permit from the Guam Fire Department. Burning times are also limited come dry season. If you suspect your coconut trees have already been hit. We take a look at the tree and we make a determination. Is the tree still going to grow? Is it st can, it st can it have a chance to recover? If it does, then we leave it be. But if we look at it and it's mortally wounded, it's been hit so many times or that the growing tip is dead, then we, we take the, um, uh, um, the approach that it's just better if we get rid of it. And so we cut it down. And For more information, contact the UOG Agriculture and Natural Resources at 735-2080.